Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm gonna to share some dagger brush techniques with you, and we are gonna paint a poppy. So I'm gonna start off by making a puddle of cadmium orange. Of course, you can mix an orange if you want, and then I am going to dip the tip of my brush in a cadmium red, and this is gonna give me a two-toned kind of blend on my brush. So your first color you put in can be a little more watery and that second color you want to pick right up off the pan. So here I am just kind of putting in a wide stroke using the flat of the brush and then I am kind of uh, defining a little bit with the tip of the dagger brush. So a dagger brush essentially um, is it can be a liner. You can use it to make really long lines. It can be used like a flat brush for broad washes and um, it can be used for special effects. And that's kind of what we're doing today is, is more of the special effects, but also a little bit of detailing work. So the reason I'm bringing out that cad orange or my lighter color, you could really use whatever colors you want, is because uh, I want that to be nice and juicy and then I want a more pasty paint on the tip of the brush so I can get that darker color that's a little more controlled. So I am just drew a line in there with that darker color to kind of get the edge of my petal and now I'm using the flat of the brush to create the um, kind of girth of the petal. So these two petals are in the center of my poppy, they're kind of curling up around the uh, black stamen. And I just want to get that kind of uh, that kind of little shape in first. And we're just gonna build petals out from here. This is a really fun exercise just to do some imagination flowers and to have, kind of have something to paint when you are, you know, uh, feeling like painting, but maybe you don't have many ideas. So look, we got that juicy, um, I would say kind of like milky consistency of paint, and then we're picking up the red paint just on the tip of the dagger. And because the dagger brush is angled, when you're just putting paint on the tip, you're just getting paint on that edge. Now, I'm grabbing a little bit of alizarin crimson because it's a little bit cooler and a little bit darker, and I want to have a little bit darker of a color for this next petal here, where um, it's uh, starting kind of in deep in the flower. I to have almost a little bit more color, maybe a little bit of shadow. And I'm jiggling my brush and jiggling the brush is allowing it to really drop that load of paint onto my paper. And then I can just very gently fill in with the tip of the brush. Remember the tip of the brush has that pasty paint, it's less likely to run and I can still keep a nice crisp edge even though that first petal isn't even dry yet. So learning how to manipulate how much water's on your brush and where you place the juicy paint versus the pasty paint can really help you um, uh, get the most out of these special effect brushes. I like to turn my paper as I go. That way I'm always pulling a stroke at an angle that's comfortable to my hand. I'm right-handed, so I find pulling a stroke towards my right hand or towards my torso is the most convenient. If you're left-handed, you probably wanna go in the other direction. So just, um, you know, either tape down your small paper to a piece of foam core so that, or cardboard so that you can move it around on your table. Or if you're working in a sketchbook, it's perfect because all you have to do is turn the sketchbook. One way I build dimension in my florals is by looking for contrast. So as I'm tucking these petals in behind other petals, I'm making them a little bit darker so they will stand up against the uh, lighter petals in the front. Also, having lighter colors in the front will make them come forward and having darker colors in the back or more muted colors will make them recede a bit. So just a little bit of um, a little color theory there. And if you want to reshape a petal, you can also go in with that darker color and kind of push a petal edge back like I just did there. This is such a fun technique to play and try, and I highly recommend you having a sketchbook that isn't too precious so that you can keep trying these techniques. And if you really love to paint brushstroke flowers like this, I have a whole course called Watercolor Flower Workshop over on my Teachable School that I'll link down below that you might wanna check out if you wanna know how to paint bunches and bunches of different flowers and arrange them in bouquets, swags, and wreaths. It's just kind of a fun way to learn how to um, create flowers from your imagination and arrange them in pleasing ways. Um, they're fun to paint on greeting cards um, and on stationery and things like that, um, or just to doodle in your sketchbook when you're lacking a little inspiration. The first flower we did was our focal flower, and this next one is gonna be more of an accent. So you'll wanna load your brush up with that orange color, and then again, dip the tip of the brush in the dried dark red paint, and then we are just going to almost make like a, I don't know what to call it, we could call it kind of like a fan stroke because we're fanning those bristles out, and now we've got a lovely ombre from that alizarin crimson down to that orange for one petal. We're gonna do a couple little bitty petals out from there, and that's just gonna make us a lovely little accent flower. Remember, if you feel uncomfortable when you are painting, 
turn your paper. Don't feel like you need to leave it square on. You want to be comfortable. You don't want a sore shoulder after painting a bunch of beautiful flowers. You want to feel good after you've painted a bunch of beautiful flowers. Think about design, balance, symmetry, um, and just try to make some pleasing brush strokes that you like. Now, don't be alarmed if you don't like your flowers at first. They may look really sloppy and um, discombobulated, but then when you look at them in a couple hours, I think you'll be surprised at how lovely they are. Now, do you notice a pattern here? We start off by making a puddle of a light color, so that nice juicy, juicy paint, and then we dip the tip in the dry cake of color. So you can do that if you're using pan paints. You can do that with whatever uh, watercolors you're using. You could even do this technique with acrylics. It's actually almost like a, like a one-stroke painting technique. So um, I hope this inspires you to give this a try with what you have on hand. Another tip I have for you uh, for making your paintings look fantastic is to mix with colors you've already used. So I'm mixing some intense or phthalo blue into the cadmium orange, and it's giving me kind of an earthy, um, an earthy green. I want to brighten it up a little bit, so I'm going to add some phthalo green, and I can even put a little lemon yellow in there to brighten it a little bit too. This kit that I'm using here didn't have a sap green, so I just want to make myself a nice earthy green that would be very similar to that. It all Always helps if you're mixing into a color you've used already. Of course, if you did have a sap green, you could go ahead and use it. Now watch how you can get a really fine line with the dagger brush. All you got to do is use it straight up and down and then pull it towards yourself. And you're really just using the tip of the brush to make the line and the rest of the brush, see how I'm loading it like that? The rest of the brush will feed it. So you can make lines for days like that. Now here you can use the flat of the brush going from the tip to the belly to the tip to make a nice blade of grass. So so practice that too if you have a dagger brush. You'll find that this could be one of the most useful brushes in your arsenal. I want to go for a lighter, brighter green, so I'm using that lemon yellow and some of the phthalo blue and mixing up this pretty, um, oh, it's almost like a uh, just a nice fresh spring green, and it seemed a little bit too um, cool, so I'm adding a little of that cad yellow in there to warm it up. Isn't that a pretty color? And we're going to paint some little uh, buds here to fill it in because it's a little sparse, so I'm using, again, that same leaf stroke but shorter to make these little buds. And then often uh, Poppy will have that kind of like um, shepherd's hook type of stock. So I put that in there and I decided I really needed to thin up those strokes where, yeah, it was fun to show you how skinny you can make a stroke. Um, the poppies need a little bit more to support them. So I just pressed a little bit more and got a thicker stroke. Now I wanted to have a kind of semi-open poppy bud. So I'm just doing a couple little strokes and leaving some space in there that I can splash in a little color to show a poppy just starting to unfurl. And I feel like telling a story like this with flowers. We're telling the story of a, uh, a brand new poppy bud and one that's starting to open and one that's a little bit more open and one's a little bit more open and then one in full bloom. I like that that kind of um, brings that motif full circle and uh, gives us a nice composition that way. So that's another thing you can think of when you're composing your piece is what is a story I'm telling? Am I telling the story of a rose, the story of a lilac, uh, the story of a tulip? You can put Put in those different stages and really create uh, a lovely composition that way. Another thing I really love about a dagger brush is how nimble it is. I can sneak right in here next to that wet paint and paint in those little um, those little petals without worrying about it getting into the green and um, just going wildly out of control. Look, I can even sneak in here between these first two petals. Those will have dried up a little bit, but this painting's in real time. They haven't really had enough time to dry fully. So it just gives you a nice versatility. You don't have to wait around too much and you can go in there and just kind of sneak in little bits of color um, a lot easier than you can with other brushes. Now I'm picking up some Payne's Gray and just dabbing into that wet wash that I just put in there so I could get a little bit of that um, that kind of um, stipply looking stamen area in the center of the flower. And I'm also going to sneak in a little of that on this other side view flower over there. I let the painting dry and now I'm going in with some details and I've switched to a liner brush. So the big reason I'd want to go to a liner rather than keeping on with the dagger brush is because the liner is not going to hold quite as much paint. So I'm not going to get a big feed out of color. I just want little wisps of color here. Um, I could do those thin strokes with the dagger, but I'd get more paint that I could 
than I could use. You got that? It's got a bigger belly. It's going to hold more paint. And uh, if I went slowly with a dagger brush, it would feed out more than I wanted. So I hope that makes sense. So this is also a Taclon bristled brush rather than a uh, synthetic squirrel or a natural hair brush. So it's not going to hold quite as much paint as those brushes. However, you have more control. So when I was first designing my brush set, I actually was going to go with a faux squirrel for my liner brush. But when I got that and I was working with it, it was too unwieldy. And I thought this is going to cause more of a headache than a uh, be a help to painters. So I decided to go with the Taclon one because it is easier to control. The load carrying capacity is a little less, but um, it's it's less unwieldy. It's just a little easier to to use. It's kind of like using a um, an automatic car instead of a standard stick shift car, you know? Sometimes it's nice to have the automatic. And I'm just going through here and adding some of those veiny, crepey-like textures that uh, you see in poppy petals. And I'm just doing that with a darker version of the red. So with less of the orange, more of the reds, and just uh, adding little edges where I need edges and um, just that little texture where I need texture. I can also add little curls in the leaf and add little shadows underneath them. This is also a very versatile brush for those line work instances, but not quite as versatile as a dagger. So if you had to pick one brush, I would say go with the dagger first uh, because it's going to do a lot more, but this is definitely a handy brush, especially if you like to do floral artwork. As you practice and gain experience with a liner brush, you can load it differently. So if you want to have a little bit more control, load it right from the cake of color. So add a little water into that, onto your half pan or into your palette well where the paint is dry and pick up your color there. That's going to give you a darker color and it's going to give you more control. But as you practice and you start wanting to go faster and maybe you want a lighter color even, you can make a big puddle of color and you can work from that. And uh, But just know when you've got more wet, juicy paint on your brush. It's going to feed out faster. So um, you can alter that. When you want to have more long flowing lines, you use more water in your, wa in your wash. You use a really uh, a juicy puddle of color. When you want to go slower and have more control like this, you work right from your well in your palette and you'll be able to control um, how many lines you can get with your dagger. You can control um, how quickly you can work and even how thick the lines are. The uh, slower you go with a really wet brush, you're going to get thicker lines. Now you see I made a puddle of kind of a more orangey mix there because I wanted to have um, more variable lines. I wanted to go slower for thicker ones, faster for thinner ones, and I wanted to have a lighter color. So I'm more going for texture, that texture of the crepey petal more than like veins or detail. So you know you vary, you vary your water, you vary the amount of pigment in there, and you vary where you load your brush on your palette. Am I going to go for a concentrated color loaded right from the well of my color? or am I going to mix up a puddle and load my brush from that? Those are little decisions that honestly I don't even think about too much, but um, but as a beginner, those are probably things you're wondering about. So I just wanted to make sure you had that information. And of course, if you're a more advanced painter, feel free to mute me. You can put this video on high speed using the little gear in the uh, corner of the player on YouTube and you can do your thing. Now what I'm doing right here is I decided I didn't like that little hairline white gap between the two colors. So I'm going in with a darker red to uh, to fill it in and even add a shadow from that leaf onto the petal. So, uh, you know, evaluate your painting as you go. What does it need? What will make it look better? What's good as, as it is? And one of the best ways to evaluate your painting is to step away from, from it for a while, let it dry, uh, and then come back with fresh eyes and you'll see what the painting needs. I really think it's important when you're using a liner brush to be pulling those strokes towards you uh, to get that really good control. That's why you want to be able to turn your work as you go. Now here you're going to see, ah, did you see what I did? I just splashed the most staining color on my palette onto my painting. That is phthalo blue and I have left quite a uh, splot there. So first thing you do, if you, this happens to you, blot it with a paper towel. Then uh, you can scrub it a little bit with some clear water and see if that will take up the color. And if it does, great. But with a color like a phthalo blue or a quinacridone red, those are gonna stain. So I do have a trick, and if you are a Frugal Friday watcher, you've already seen this trick, but what you want to do is get out a magic eraser. 
wet it, wring it out, and gently scrub at the area and it will take the paint off. It is amazing. Now, the only thing to keep in mind with this technique is that you want to do this at the end of your painting session because if you paint over that area, it is going to stain big time because you've abraded the sizing on the paper. But at the end of your painting, it is a great way to pick up any of those boo-boos that might have happened. Phew, tragedy averted. Now we can go back to that. <laughs> to that mixed green that caused all the trouble in the first place and we can go in with our liner brush and add some details so another thing to keep in mind when you're using the liner brush i recommend you use it at a 90 degree angle with your paper that's going to give you the best control you can get you know feather little razor sharp lines by um, just going quickly and you can get wider lines by slightly angling your hand and pulling a stroke slower. So you don't get as much variation with a liner brush, but it does its job well. It gives you long lines. It can do a lot of grasses, a lot of details. Um, and because it only puts out a little bit of paint at a time, uh, it is going to be great for those finishing touches. Now, when you get to the end and you're doing absolute finishing touches, not so much on a painting like this, but let's say you're painting um, an animal and you're doing fur, this liner brush is going to be great for that kind of near to the end, putting a lot of lines down. But when you do your final like little whiskers and eyelashes, you might want to go to a spotter or even just a small round so you don't get too much paint. But going to a smaller brush towards the end of your painting is nice because you get, uh, you don't put down as much paint so you have a less chance of making a big error. So here I'm going in with a Payne's Gray and adding some stippling and a little line on the edge of that inner petal just to give it those little, um, little dots on the ends of the stamens there. Honestly, all you need is some little dots. You don't need to draw the lines. Your brain will put in that detail. You just want to get that little bit of texture in there for the um, kind of fuzzy uh, center of the flower. And that does it for this painting. It was so fun and easy. I hope you enjoyed painting along. My last tip is a simple one. It's just to clean your mixing area between paintings. Just take a big brush, wet it, and liquefy all that paint and just wipe it out. And then you'll start fresh and new on your next painting. It'll help you avoid mud and you're really not wasting much paint here. If you enjoyed this video, you may like my watercolor flower workshop course on Teachable. I'll link it down below as well as my new set of brushes from Craft Ammo that has all the brushes we use today. And um, I think they're pretty great. Maybe you will too. Thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you like these beginner basics videos. Until next time, happy crafting. Bye.